Hi, my name is Jeff Natali. I'm 65, semi-retired, and living here in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. I was originally from New York State, a very small town along the Hudson River, about 35 miles north of the city. I still work here in Mexico uh, remotely. Uh, I consult for the last company that I worked for, which is a landscape uh, contracting company uh, named Agostino. So in addition to working remotely, I became involved with the Mexico Relocation Guide. And thanks to Mariana, I've been able to meet a lot of new people. Uh, it's been an extremely interesting experience. I get to share all of my knowledge of living and working here in Playa del Carmen. And also, in addition to my working remotely and Mexico Relocation Guide, I still do a little bit of landscaping here for, for expats. Uh, it's something in my blood that I've been doing for the last 45 years, so it was just not very easy to give up. So I have a few clients here. I don't take every job that I look at. Uh, I'm very particular in how I conduct business here. And it's, it's become sort of a hobby as well as uh, an extra form of, of income here in, uh, in Mexico. I moved to Mexico in December of 2019. Um, it was a long process. I actually started the makings of moving here in 2014 when I bought my house. Uh, so five years had passed before I actually moved in. Uh, the original plan was to buy the house and rent it. But then after I got here, I said, well, this is mine. I really don't want to rent it. Uh, I just want to keep it for myself. And I came three four times a year on vacations and this was my home away from home. I've always had a big, or always been a big fan of ancient history and Mexican culture and growing up in a town where there was a very heavy Latino presence, uh, that sparked my interest. So we went to Mexico City, spent four or five days there visited all the, the local sites, Teotihuacan, Xochimilco, uh, Plaza Garibaldi, and then we made a side trip to Merida. I probably enjoyed Merida the most because it was more of a colonial town, and if I hadn't moved here to Playa, Merida probably would have been my second choice. I thought that Mex other than Mexico, the closest thing that I came to probably making a decision where I might want to live would be Spain because of the language and because of the culture. Very similar, uh, but different. So I enjoyed Spain a lot. And, but once I came to Mexico, that was it. Uh, I was bitten by the bug. I actually, I fell in love with the country, the people, the culture and couldn't wait to come back. So <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, one day I decided to take a day trip and we left Cancun and came by bus. And as we were coming south, we got to just about two kilometers outside of Playa del Carmen. And I saw this sign on the side of the road that said, Escaré. And I said, that is a cool name. And I kept thinking about Eshkere, Eshkere. So in 2010, I made my first trip here to Playa del Carmen, and I was staying at the all-inclusive resort in Playa Car, and it just didn't do it for me. Uh, I love the area. I spent most of the time around the Fifth Avenue and, and in town. So six months later, I came back to Playa del Carmen, and where do I stay? now in a boutique hotel on the Fifth Avenue. So that went on for about four years. In 2013, I seriously started to consider moving here. 
on a permanent basis. And that's when I began all of my research to begin to get here. I did consider Merida. Uh, I did like it uh, because it being a colonial town. Um, if you realize where I live here in Playa, it is not in Centro. It is sort of outside the city. I do enjoy the, the rural area. Uh, it's nice and quiet. I settled here in Bali Residencial. It is exactly two kilometers away from that sign that I saw 35 years ago called Eshkere. Playa del Carmen is very different from other cities in Mexico. Basically because everyone from Playa is not from Playa. There was a major influx of people coming to Quintana Roo for work. There are people here from all over the Republic and it's reflected in the food and the culture and just day-to-day -day life here. But most expats, when they come to Mexico, the first thing they want to do is rent to decide whether they like the area or not. In my case, going back to that Eshkadet sign, I knew where I wanted to be. I did not look for rentals. I looked for uh, owning a home. And I had looked at many different areas here in, in Playa. Playa has over 90 colonias, which you would call neighborhoods. This area became very special to me and it started to develop. Now, when you come in off the main highway, we have a very, very well accredited uh, school at Papalote, it is now very close by. We have our own OXO. OXO is very similar to uh, 7-Eleven or uh, Circle K or Krausers, depending on what area. And they also serve as a hub for making payments. You can pay just about any bill in an OXO. You've got to spend, spend some time. But that's the great thing about Mexico is the unexpected. Uh, everything takes longer. You have to come with a ton of patience packed in your suitcases, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. You get to know everybody by first name, and it's something that doesn't happen in the United States, and it's pretty unique to Mexico. This particular complex, Valle Residencial, is very secure. Uh, we have a main gate uh, that you have to be announced to, be able to, to come in, and that means visitors, uh, service providers, anybody that's coming to your home, you have to call your caseta, which is the secondary security that we have inside the privada. So there are times where I actually even forget to lock my door at night. I feel very, very safe here. Buying a house here in Mexico, the the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is find a reputable, knowledgeable real estate agent who knows the area, who's going to listen to your needs uh, and desires. Basically your lifestyle uh, will change when you come to Mexico and a lot of it has to do with where you decide to live. I was talking to a local friend of mine and he introduced me to a local independent realtor who had no affiliation with any real estate agent here in Mexico uh, or Playa del Carmen. And she actually sat and listened to what I wanted and we concentrated on properties that fit my needs. I saw things that I liked, I saw things that I didn't like. Uh, for me, the, one of the big factors was the quality of the construction. And as soon as I saw this place, I said, this is it. I hadn't even been into any of the models. I hadn't looked at any of the properties. I just got to this location and said, this is where I gotta be. And we went in and looked at the models and I was like totally blown away. There are some very good groups on Facebook 
that would help you find a, a realtor. Um, I also moderate a Facebook page for expats. Um, I think it is the largest expat uh, group here in Playa del Carmen. We have over 31,000 members. So as a moderator, I see all of the questions and these questions come up all of the time. Who are the best realtors? Uh, how do I go about buying a house here in Mexico? What are the restrictions? Is it easy? Uh, how do I send money? Um, everything that you would think about in the United States, but makes it a little bit more difficult here in Mexico because A, the language is different and the procedures are different. So the first step is after you've decided where you want to live, um, you have to go out and you can either get a, an attorney to help you. Uh, I did not. I didn't know if I needed one. Um, my realtor actually handled all of the paperwork for me. Um, but there are choices that you can make um, as far as who your notaria is going to be, uh, what bank that you're going to use for a fideicomiso. As far as financing goes, um, there are companies that will help you finance um, a home here in Mexico. It's not very common because the interest rates are extremely high uh, and the terms of the loans are very short. I could sell if I wanted to. The market is very, very strong here in, in Playa right now. There are so many people that want to move to Mexico. But you know, this is mine. I'm not selling it and I'm very happy here. And I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> um, considering houses in the US are built out of wood, this is out of solid concrete. And uh, But for the value, uh, and the, the mode of construction, it's, it's just incredible to, to be able to buy a home here. And taxes, I pay $85 a year in real estate taxes, but on my parents' home, they were paying $6,000 a year just in real estate taxes. So going from $6,000 a year to $65, and that's with a discount, because <laughs> if you pay early, you get 20% off. Uh, you can be here on a tourist visa, or you can be temporary, or, or permanent residency. Um, I will tell you that being a resident makes things a lot easier for you. No, it's not difficult to buy as a tourist. Uh, I actually bought on a, on a tourist visa. There are many facilitators uh, listed in the guide, um, not just here in Playa del Carmen, but in, in other parts of Mexico uh, to help you get your residency. And it all starts outside the country. Um, in, your, in your home country, you have to visit a Mexican consulate and whether you get temporary or permanent residency depends on your economic solvency, um, how much money you have in the bank. So some con most consulates have different requirements. Some are higher, some are lower. You need to do a little bit of research uh, to find out uh, which consulate is, is best for you. And in the relocation guide lists a lot of the consulates and their specific requirements. So the consulate that is closest to your home is not necessarily the place that you have to go. But I came to Mexico basically on a letter from my employer that said I would be continued um, employment and making X amount of dollars per, per month, which was more than the requirement um, that was needed. I think back then it was in 2013 when I got my visa. Uh, the requirement was about $1,860 a month. Well, li living outside of, of Playa, um, 
even by just a few kilometers, uh, requires you basically to have transportation. If it's inside city proper, uh, there is plenty of public transportation. There are colectivos, uh, there are combis, which have specific routes, and you can go from one side of the city to, to the other. Uh, taxis will take you anywhere you want to go here in Playa del Carmen. They run by zones, but I do have a car. And living out here in Bali, just a couple of kilometers outside of town, uh, it's like you can't get there from here. Uh, too far to walk. Uh, when it's really hot, you probably wouldn't want to take a bicycle. Uh, but Having a car gives you the freedom to come and go as you please and go wherever you want, whenever you want. We have a clubhouse which has meeting rooms, we have sauna, we have yoga rooms, we have a gym, we have a half court uh, soccer field, basketball, squash, tennis, um, half Olympic sized pool, and that's just in the clubhouse. Each privada has its own personal pool just for the residents in our, our particular uh, condominium area. So as far as safety goes and security, gated communities are extremely, extremely secure. And there are a lot of kids here, uh, a lot of younger children. Uh, there's teens and tweens as, as well. Um, they all like to hang out at the clubhouse. So, so it, it is family oriented. Services wise will go from the cheapest to the expensive. Um, here, water is your cheapest utility. Um, I'm a single guy. I have a two story house. I cook, I wash. Uh, of course we shower every day. Um, my water bill runs about 200 pesos a month, which is $10. Uh, internet, internet's a little, little funny because not every service provider in Playa del Carmen services every area. Uh, the Wi-Fi is excellent inside the house here, even though it's concrete, and I have super fast uh, internet here. As far as electric goes, I have big air conditioner here. This one's 18,000 BTU. Um, I have three other mini splits upstairs in the, in the bedrooms, which I don't use during the day. Uh, because of all the utilities, electricity is the most expensive here. I haven't really had any problems with uh, service outages. But for the most part, even during hurricanes and tropical storms, as most I was ever out of power here in Bali was probably three or four hours during a hurricane. And that's pretty good. Primarily because all of our services are underground out here. Well, what's there not to do here in Playa? The biggest thing that comes to mind is food. <laughs> uh, the Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue is just a pedestrian shopping area that goes from South Playa all the way up to Calle 88, I believe, and even farther. Uh, those areas are not as well developed, but in the main section of the Fifth Avenue, any restaurant that you can think of um, from you know, five-star dining at Harry's to uh, tacos. <laughs> there's, there's just so much to do. And, you know, at, at any given time on the Fifth Avenue, there are thousands of people, you know, from one end to the other. We have a beautiful park in Playa, uh, right off the Fifth Avenue, uh, Parque Fundadores, which is next to the, the ferry pier to Cozumel newly renovated. There are shows that they do in the, in the park. There's a, there's a Mayan show. We have the Lola Lores de Pampantla uh, daily. Uh, on the weekends, there are local clowns that come and entertain the kids. 
uh, which is fun to go watch. Street food all over the place, uh, every street corner, from Pozole to Tacos uh, Canasta, uh, whatever you want, uh, Biria, uh, you name it, you can find it in a, in a street cart. Very reasonably priced, very good, and don't be afraid to try the local fare. <laughs> There is no, I'm not going to eat off the street cart. I said, that is the best food in Mexico, <laughs> by far. And it is the most economical. So many things to do here in Playa. Uh, short drive outside of town by taxi, colectivo. You can even bike to some of them. Cenotes, we have the most beautiful cenotes uh, here in, in and around Playa. Actually, this is the largest aquifer in the world. The beaches I prefer are a little bit farther south of Playa, Ishkuja, uh, Acomal. You want to go swim with the turtles. Uh, it's truly unique. I get a lot of questions asked of me, is Playa del Carmen safe? Is Mexico safe? My answer to that is I don't feel any different here than I did in New York or New Jersey. In all of my years here in Mexico, and that goes back to, to 1982, I have never had a problem anywhere I've visited in Mexico. Have I felt insecure or unsafe in any place that I've been in Mexico? No. Um, I walk the streets by myself. Do I take precautions? Yes. You can't rely on what you read in the news. Uh, you have to really experience living here. Uh, walking down the street in, in Playa del Carmen is no different than walking down the street in my hometown in, back, in, back in New Jersey. Regarding healthcare here in, in Playa, luckily I have not had the opportunity <laughs> To say or nothing has happened to me that I've needed to go to a local hospital or a clinic for other than a cold but you know nothing catastrophic has, has ever happened to me here my prescriptions I buy over-the-counter here for a fraction of the cost of what they they cost me in the United States and I don't need a prescription for them here. I have not done it yet, but I have all the paperwork ready. I will be going on the IMSS system here in Mexico. And for my age, uh, premiums are based on your age group. I'll be paying somewhere around 14,000 pesos a year, which is about $700. Uh, Mexico City, Merida, Cancun, there are all world-class hospitals with specialists in just about every, uh, every field. So if, if you do need a specialist, a heart specialist, a kidney specialist, pulmonary, whatever, they are available here and your Medicaid Advantage uh, is accepted in many of the hospitals here. Uh, so. The only reason you won't have medical coverage here is if you don't look for it, <laughs> because it is there and it is affordable. Playa has some specialists. Um, from what I've seen in the expat groups where they have specific, uh, specific issues, um, the best places to go would be like Cancun or Merida for different type of uh, specialty needs. If it's not a serious ailment, you can go to the local pharmacy and there's usually a doctor on call uh, who's there. Um, they'll charge you either just a donation or 50 pesos and they'll diagnose you, give you your prescriptions and you just go next door and, and pick it up. Back in the US, I <laughs> had bronchitis every three months, uh, usually the flu or whatever every six months, whatever. Okay. I don't know whether it's something in the air here or I just wash my hands more. <laughs> but 
I have yet to have any any major ailment here, uh, and as as far as you know, bronchitis goes. It's been three years since since I've had it. I did get it once, and I had gone back to the U.S. <laughs> for ten days. But here in Playa, I'm much more healthier than than I was in the United States. In fact, my first year here, uh, my lifestyle had changed so much that I lost 30 kilos in my first year here. 30 kilos is about 60 pounds. And that was just basically no more fast food and got replaced with healthy, fresh, fresh foods that are readily available here. And I got my life back that I could start cooking again. I wasn't working 18 hours a day. And yeah, I'm still a little overweight, but uh, I can deal with it now. Uh, the steps that I took to begin my move to Mexico um, basically started in 2013 when I decided to, to buy the house. Um, one thing I, I wish that I had had back then was the Mexico Relocation Guide because I had to do everything on my own. Uh, I had no clue as to what it was going to take to, to move down here. The guide does not cover how to bring a bird to, to Mexico, but that was a, that was a big, uh, big ordeal. But again, there were just how to do basic things. Uh, I knew I wanted to be a resident. I had no idea where to start. Uh, if I had had the guide, I, I would have known you know, certain facilitators to contact ahead of time because I did everything on my own. And to be honest with you, I wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. My first attempt to get temporary residence was denied in the New York City consulate because basically I went in and said the wrong things and uh, didn't actually know what I was asking for. Um, I just thought it was easy to just go in and say, you know, I want to become a, a resident, fill out the paperwork, and they were going to say, okay, you make enough money and stamp, visa, and now you have 180 days to, to enter Mexico. So I, I wish there had been a set of procedures of how do you do this, how do you do that. I became affiliated with the Mexico Relocation Guide, actually through the expats page uh, here in Playa del Carmen. And, and I enjoy helping people. Uh, and, I, and I could give you, if, if somebody wanted to go to Steffi Plan and, and register their car, I could write all the steps down for you exactly in the order that, that you need to do them. <laughs> and if I ended up wasting time, doing it myself, at least I've helped somebody else go and only spend a minimal amount of time. I don't know if there's such thing as a typical day here in Mexico. I'm a very early riser. Uh, 6 o'clock a.m. I'm up. My built-in alarm clock is standing on top of the cage over there. Uh, a lot of people don't realize and they'll say, well, what do you do all day? And I well, it's not like I'm on vacation every day. I run a household here, and plus I work. And Thursdays, Thursdays is usually my afternoon out. restaurant that I go to in the afternoons. And they open at 3 o'clock. Uh, it's happy hour. It's near the 5th Avenue. Uh, it's two for one. And I usually meet a group of friends there and we spend a couple hours just chatting and 
about all kinds of things. And I think I'm pretty well assimilated into Mexican culture here. I understand that, you know, it is a slower pace. Things take a lot longer than what we're used to back in the States getting things done. I think for me, the biggest struggle will always be with the language. Uh, my life has changed quite a bit since moving here. Uh, it's slowed down drastically. Uh, I do not work 18 hours a day anymore or six days a week. I work when I work, when I want to, for as long as I want to. I think your personality changes too a little bit when you get here. You, you slow down, uh, you become a little bit more open to things. Uh, a little bit more tolerant. Um, phys <laughs> my physical appearance has, has certainly changed. Uh, I'm certainly much tanner than I used to be in, in the United States. Uh, and, <laughs> and my actual appearance has <laughs> sort of drastically changed as well. Um, <laughs> I was very used to keeping my hair uh, very short in the United States. And I guess the biggest aspect of that whole change is <laughs> this. <laughs> my hair is now down to my shoulders. And uh, if, if my mom and dad were still alive, I probably would have been smacked already. <laughs> I don't think I've worn shoes in, <laughs> in three years. <laughs> so th those are the biggest changes. Uh, and they're all for the good. I think everyone's going to go through some type of change when when they move here and they're pretty much going to be all for the better as well. The biggest advice that I can give to anyone moving to Mexico is really do your research. Um, you can't just show up in this country and say I'm going to move, I'm going to live here and I'm going to do it under my terms. So all of that research that you're going to do uh, ahead of time will basically put you ahead of most people who are just showing up here with really no plan as to how to get things done. The relocation guide really spells it out for you as about as easily as, as it possibly can be. So you really need to do your research before you to make the decision because Mexico is not for everyone um, it takes a special breed uh, person to come and pull up stakes and move to a foreign country uh, especially where English is, is not the dominant language and the more information that you have ahead of time coming into uh, a situation like moving to a foreign country it'll just make your life so much easier to, to know what to expect, know how to get things done, know where to go and who to go to when you need things. Knowledge is power and the more knowledge you have, the easier your life will become moving here to Mexico.